guys, this is Lisa from Local King Robert Stan. Welcome to my channel. Ready for today's video? Today's we vi video. Today's video, I'm going to share with you some great techniques. And uh, I am going to do two separate videos because I don't want this vi um, video to become too long. But I also I want to go through the detail to share with you the techniques that um why when I create this car. So and uh, also I'm going to explain to you how did I kill my mink laminated machine. That's really painful, and I killed my machine when I created this uh, this uh, project. So this is the car. I'm going to explain to you how did I get the idea. But when you see through from the camera, you probably cannot see the detail. But I'm going to take this one out. So you can see, isn't that look like the stained glass effect? So this is on the piece of uh, acetate. Um, there is a heatable acetate, but I don't have it. So I did one video to share with you guys how can you use the laminated sheet to create a heatable acetate. Um, I will put the link below, but I will explain to my uh, next video. So this is what's look like. I think is a pretty unique and then is uh, is uh, embossing on the heatable acetate. This is the background. Actually, I think when I remove that butterfly, the background looks really awesome, right? So I am actually using our stamps called the sky and also the silence uh, background stamp to create this beautiful background. And I'm going to share with you some tips. So let's put my butterfly back first. So that's today's car project. I think it's really pretty, but I'm going to share with you where did I get idea? So I don't um, have a copyright for this one, but I want to share with you. I actually saw this car, this post pop out from my um, on my Facebook is from the Crafty Morning, and I think this is really somebody's garden. I I really wondering, wow, whose garden it is that beautiful stainless uh, artwork? Um, is uh, just so pretty. So when I see this and I say, hey, wait a minute, I can um, create some car just like that. Let's do some comparison. Okay, so because I don't have a copyright, I don't know, am I going to get into trouble or not? So I'm going to just show you from my phone. And then this is a car from, from, I think from the camera, you probably cannot see the beautiful color of the butterfly. Oops. Okay. Pretty cool, right? I'm going to explain to you step by step how did I do that. But I think this background, it looks just amazing, isn't it? And it's very simple to create. And then I use this die cut. This is a um, Tinkholz uh, die cut. I have this for a while. And yesterday was actually the first time I'm using. And you can see I paid over 99 for that. It's uh, just a, a very, very detailed die cut. And I'm very impressed because when I run to the machine, one run, it all, oh, <laughs> put your, what am I doing? One run and then I have a very clean cut. So that's today's project and uh, I am going to do two videos. So the first video I'm going to share with you how did I create uh, the background like that. And I add, uh, I using or rose garden because after I created, I found out, um, I just found out a little bit too empty, empty. I feel something's missing and I go digging to my old, my image and I have a lot of stamp. So I think at least rose garden will do well. So I just use this rose garden and I, um, the stem is a little bit too big. So I kind of put on time and trimming the side. So I'm going to show you also a quick, uh, um, I'm going to show you in the video like a quick coloring technique. So it is a good idea. Sometimes you are like uh, you're looking for some image, stamp image, but you don't have it. Look what you have it and then try to make it work. And that I think that's, uh, that's uh, just the best part of the car making, right? So let's put my butterflies here. And what do you think? I think it's a pretty, um, pretty cool. And then um, the original artwork is actually somebody's uh, garden, somebody's uh, garden door, right? And then I think uh, 
because I use alcohol marker to color my acetate and then um, alcohol marker they are kind of transparency but if I can find some kind of acrylic paint to color it I think I am able to create these uh, very very light blue so um, I don't have an acrylic paint oh actually I do have an acrylic paint so I'm going to see if I can do but that's the start today's video I'm going to share with you how did I create these background is so easy and then you can give it a try so that's it started okay so I am going to stamping on this just an inexpensive car style this is a hundred pounds of white car stuff on my cozy recollection so um just in case I don't get a nice clean image, so I am going to just uh, use a stamp positioner in, ca um, if, in case I miss some part of the image and uh, I can just uh, go back to stamp one more time. If you don't have a stamp positioner, I remember I created a video um, to share with you guys uh, how can you use the DVD case to create a uh, stamp positioner but if you have the budget i highly recommend to get one it doesn't matter which brand it is but i've been using this misty and i like it it works just fine so this is our sky background this is the background i created in 2021 and uh, 2021 now is 2023 time flies so i'm going to just put here okay try to make it horizontal because you don't want your sky kind of like a leaning like a kind of sky kind of you know what i mean okay so here is a great technique because at least the sky image is partially like a shadow stamp um i'm creating a video to share uh, to explain to you guys what's the um, difference between the shadow stamp and the detail stamp so the shadow stamp is kind of like a bow image and the detail stamp is kind of like this butterfly with like a very very um like they have an outline they have a white spot you can go uh feed it out the white spot right so when you have a shadow stamp especially the rubber stamp um, if you haven't used them for a while, they don't really take ink well. So what are you going to do? You're going to just use at least a nail flyer. Um, kind of just uh, sanding the surface. Trust me, you do. The, you don't have to do all the time. But that, um, I, if I have a stamp that I don't use it for a while, and you kind of you, you, when you see that stamp, you kind you can find that stamp is kind of very like a shining. That mean is that they kind of need a little bit of scent. So nothing fancy and they just gently rub a little bit and then they will do a great job. So and you can buy this from a dollar store is pretty cheap. Okay, so that will definitely and especially the shadow stamp. Um, my next next video I'm going to share with you guys uh, do a comparison what's different between the shadow stamp and detail stamp. They are different. Okay, so I have my stamp ready and I have my car ready here. Okay, and then I am going to do something. So I am going to use, uh, I'm going to just do a two impact. So did you watch my last video? My last video was to share with you guys how can you use the reinker to create a new impact. So I actually create a new impact. This is called the crystal blue and if I use a memento impact and just love it. I add a fine more blue tone to my memento impact like it. We are going to need the use of magic mushroom and you can see here is my magic mushroom and you can see uh, I haven't used them for a while and it is a completely come back to my original shade or mushroom is designed for um, tapping, blending, rubbing, you can do everything and uh, I have created over 100 videos plus to share with you guys how to use the uh, magic mushroom. So it is a little bit different compared with uh, other company product. So I have a boo boo's water ball. <laughs> This is the hot ball. And I want to, um, my first uh, Magic Mushroom video, it was launched three years ago. You can see my holding base is kind of like a wooden block because uh, 
after the first shipment arrived, I found out this uh, mushroom is just like running over everywhere on the table. I don't like that. So that's why I ordered a base to hold my magic mushroom. So in uh, my first video, I was uh, like mentioning just to give your mushroom a little bit moisture. And then I found that actually it need a lot of moisture. And especially our magic mushroom is uh, custom made and then the head is flat. So if you like to know how did I get this uh, magical mushroom idea, I do have a story to tell and then check our website and then um, go to our blog and uh, I explain how did I come up with this uh, idea three three years ago. So I really, and then this uh, is actually dirty because I didn't clean it right after I use it, you don't have to. So I kind of just uh, kind of like uh, put my sponge part completely in the water and then you can see the sponge is grow up pretty big like magic okay so let's do a comparison you can see what's the different right it really um grow up big and then uh, if you want to use the uh, magic mushroom to do the blending it's better that they have to be moisture. They have to be moisture. But if they are too wet, they will not uh, pick up the color. If they are too dry, they won't be able to blend. You can just tap to do the stencil, but I um, I come up with this idea, idea because I want a mushroom mushroom can do all. And then it is the, a little bit tricky because you want your tool to last forever, right? I'll show you what I do. This mushroom has been, I've been using for a long time. You can see here a little bit crack, okay? So that's because I didn't really pay attention holding the, the sponge bar when I blending. So be careful. Okay, so that's put my grab juice away. And then I'm going to just use a white cloth to also just absorb a little bit extra extra water so you can see the size is really different and then um, I want to just remind you guys if you use uh, your magical mushroom with the oxidized ink you got to clean it after you use it because the oxidized ink is kind of like a pigment ink if you leave that on your magical mushroom after a while they will harden your mushroom um, if you like, a, I don't know, do you have this kind of experience when you have some pigment impact and then you didn't use for a while and then you didn't put the co uh, cover back to your impact and then when your impact dry, that impact is going to become harder. The foam of the impact will become hard, right? So that's because of the pigment ink. So make sure if you use an oxidized ink, you got to clean your magic mushroom well. Just I show you, um, put your um, sponge part inside the water a few times, wash a few times. You don't have to wash your mushroom under the like a running tap water. Just do that, make sure the tip is, uh, I mean, your sponge part is completely clean. If you use a dye based ink pad, don't worry about it. So, because you can see my mushroom is uh, like really dirty, I really didn't clean it until the next time when I need to use it. Okay, this technique I actually learned from Tracy. Tracy, Tracy, her last name, Shaws. Shaws? Shaws, I think. Tracy, she actually uh, did a demo on her YouTube channel. She said, hey, and you can use this mushroom um, because I thought my mushroom can only use on the paper, but actually it's a great blending tool to do on the uh, directly on the stamp. So thank you, Tracy, for sharing this idea with us. And then I use it all the time. She totally deserves the credit. Okay, so I want to create my sky, but I don't want to have that stamp like a borderline. I want to have like a very, very soft, really look like, like a na nature. So I just use my summer sky impact like this. And then I just put a little bit in the middle and then I'm going to use my magic marshal. Remember they are moisture and they are kind of clean. See, it doesn't really have a color on top. And then I'm going to just use my my sponge part kind of just uh, pick up some of the impact uh, ink from my from my um ink summer sorry not ink sky stamp and then i'm going to do that and i'm going to just do this 
And you see, I have a very, very light color. So I am going to do a little bit more now. So let's do a little bit more on the bottom. Okay. Always start with a little bit lighter color. If it's not enough, we are going to add more. So I just want to have a very, very soft uh, blue sky. Okay, see, I don't have that borderline because I don't want that borderline. And then now, I am going to actually, Nancy, you're right. The phone, the phone impact, it works very well. They are actually, um, it's good. But I like, it. so now, I like both the phone and the felt. So you don't have to use your impact directly on the stand because I want a very, very soft color. So I'm going to just use my magic mushroom. Just pick a little bit blue, not too much. And I'm going to just gently tap, tap. Just a little bit gently tap, tap. If it's not enough, we add more. So, and then I'm going to do this. See that blue? If you want to have a more, okay, a one then maybe here a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead, give a little bit more. But you can see I have that circle mark, right? I don't want that because the real neat natural sky doesn't have that mark. So I'm using my magic mushroom to soft it. There you go. I think that's really pretty, but if you want to more. So I use it so far, two of the impact color. I am going to just pick up another one. That's the easy 20, Marina. Just uh, a little bit. I don't want it too much. So it has been almost one week. I create those impact, but they are still very moisture. So I don't have to worry about it. In the beginning, I was kind of worried. They say for the pigment, uh, pigment re-inker. So now I think it, it will just, it will be fine because there is a, actually few of the impact on the market is uh, foam. So let's do that. And I really, really love uh, to add these uh, few more blue color. I'm going to do a little bit gently that. Try to soft, soften your mark because we don't want to show. So very, very gentle. And then even on the top, um, how about let's do a little bit more. I am going to do a little bit more here. So unfortunately, you got to use the spongy head. You cannot use a brush because if, when you use the brush, the brush, uh, every time when you brush uh, your stamp, they will leave the brush mark. So in the, or, Mushroom, the head is a little bit flatter. If you really, you know, don't want to invest your money on the tool, that's okay. You can go try some makeup sponge. Just try to looking for the flatter, um, flatter sponge. Okay, any tool work is the good tool. So let's do that. Whew. I think that's really pretty. That's the sky I want. Okay, and then now I'm going to do this. So uh, I am going to do my tree first. Do my tree first or do the background first? I think that's a do or silence, um, I mean, or silence tree first. So that's so uh, take my, this one away. And then my silence uh, stamps here. And um, I am going to only use a little bit, like a one third of this tree. You can stamp on the right side and left side anywhere you like. So I'm going to just do this. Okay. Okay. And then let's do that. And I'm going to just put the piece of tape here. Okay, so also same thing. I didn't really use this silence stand for a while. So I'm going to let's 
sorry so i haven't used my silences there for a while so i am going to yeah so i'm going to just extending the surface a little bit like i say you don't have to do it every single time just that uh, when you find out your stamp image that it doesn't really stamp well this is that uh, will definitely help you to bring the life back to your rubber stamp and then please don't do this on your clear stamp the uh, clear stamp is going to leave a mark it's going to damage your stamp okay i did mention in my video don't do it don't do it okay so to my um tree i did a uh, one very light bamboo leaf and then i am going to just uh, do a little bit darker color it doesn't really matter because it doesn't really show so i'm going to do a little bit darker color on the bottom and the same thing we are going to use the or magic mushroom just to soften the the borderline okay let's do that so i'm going to do this and so because it's a regular cardstock just in case so that's my tree i think that's okay but maybe i want to uh doesn't matter i think that's good enough because the the gate is going to color then so i'm going to just clean my stem and i am going to sh we're going to roll we're going to use our macro marshal we are going to do some rolling okay so next i am going to bring my piece of metal because i found out i always get the fingerprinting on my artwork i really don't like that so we are going to actually create that grass okay the beautiful carpet so first we are going to clean or magic mushroom see i only clean when i need to use it so that's my butterfly go stay somewhere okay so you kind of just uh, do a few times you can see those uh, ink it just uh, come try to only dipping your sponge part inside the water because the tube is actually hollow i cannot bring it some so it's a kind of hollow so if you like put all your the whole magic mushroom inside your like the water the tube maybe suck out some um water and the later on there the water is going to stay there so that's not a good idea and now we have uh, spanish juice so again i'm going to just uh, remove that extra ink on my magic mushroom and then okay see moisture but not too wet if it's too wet you won't be able to blend so that's put uh, my sample away here so we are going to start with a few green and then i uh, already ordered the the rest of the green color the re, uh, ink refill from the image craft so if you like to do some like uh, add a few impacts to your collection you can do that too because that I'm always looking for some pretty green here. So I have a few of a green here. I don't think so. I'm going to use at least all of our grow. I'm going to use at least three green color. Okay, so we're going to start the pear tart first. Okay, and then same thing, going to just pick up some color. Okay, and then see my card is pretty much secure on the this piece of metal if you don't have it in the last video i was talking about the least one from dollar store but i found uh, they are not they are okay it's actually quite a strong too and also light so but i i just like this one is just hang there okay you are going to start we are not tapping because you tap it's going to leave that circle we're going to actually dragging from my uh metal base so one way from the one way left to right or right to the left sometimes it kind of brush the ink 
which is setting on my metal kind of brush then don't try to start from top of your paper because it's going to have that circle and also when you rub that makes sense you got to use your finger to um support your sponge otherwise your sponge you do like this too many times any tool is going to be damaged right so just got to know how to take in care of your tool so i actually holding my sponge and i kind of just rubbing okay one direction that's very important if you do two directions like a two do do it's going to leave a mark so go all the way and then come back like this just a, like a sweet sweep your floor so that's the first color the pear tart and then we're going to do the bamboo leaf second okay you don't have to clean your your um magic mushroom because we are start from the light to the dark so and then this one is actually holding my paper so actually working pretty good and then i know a lot of you guys they say oh where can you find this one i bought this one from the world markup years ago and then i check they don't have any more but i did find that they have something at the home depot you just check a luminator sheet just try to find a piece of metal they will do the job okay again what do you have to do one direction like a brush your like a sweep and then use your fingers suppose your sponge so let's do that Okay, that's good. And then now we are going to roll. How are we gonna roll? We are going to use these Catherine Pullers uh, grass skirt. Grass skirt, what a beautiful name. This time, we are going to use the side of the magic mushroom, kind of just pick up a little, uh, little bit color, not too much. And then you can gently squeeze your mushroom a little bit. And then we're going to kind of just uh, make a, a little bit darker green I think that's a very pretty grass carpet is it okay so now I think that's a pretty good and then I am going to move my stuff away always uh, cleaning your station put uh, your magic mushroom to your holding base if you purchase a set of a magic mushroom because and then because we don't sell those holding base on the uh website we are designing this one for local things customer only for the holding or magic mushroom only if you bought a set of a magic mushroom but you didn't order the holder you change your mind and you want to order to let, um, send me an email let me know or we will be in the calgary edmonton and uh cincinnati next next few following months come to the show pick up on the show because uh, the holding base is two for 12.99 the shipping is 15 dollars that's just ridiculous okay so let's do any recently you can see on my video um, on my website kind of adjusting the shipping fee you know, this shipping fee is really kind of killing me. I signed out the ship station. Sometimes they are cheaper. Sometimes Canada Post is cheaper. I just have to compare it. So now I kind of dropped the price to six uh, six ninety nine ship a box of magic mushroom to the US and six forty nine to or Canadian customer. But take a look your box and then you can see how much we pay for that uh, postage sometimes i charge you like seven dollars it costs us 25 dollars but it's really hard to tell okay so now i am going to grab my glossy cardstock and then i am going to see this beautiful um background sometimes here you look like a fuji mountain that's actually on my schedule i'm actually planning to go to japan again and then on the way to um and no it's just stopping japan for three days and i'm going to go back to taiwan visit my family in november so hoping i can see the fuji mountain this time because the last time it didn't get a chance to do that and this time the husband is coming okay so i have this glossy car stock and uh this daika is really actually 
pretty unique. It's Ting Ho Saika. Okay, and then when you put your die card in um on your die card machine, right? Try to put it on the right side or left side. Don't try to put it in the middle. And I found out you put the right side or left side, the pressure actually cut better. So I'm going to die cut it and I will be right back. It's pretty unique. Look how detailed it is. Okay, and then, you know what? The quality doesn't matter. I know you guys can find something very good price from the AliExpress, you know, and then maybe eBay. It may be cheaper, but uh, you know, the quality really doesn't make a difference. It is really different. I know some um, YouTubers say, hey, you know those uh, magic mushroom or paper puncer or whatever. It looks pretty much like a makeup sponge. You can find it from the Amazon. If you go to Amazon, yes, it's $15. You take a look at their phone, okay? First of all, they don't have a storage container. And the second of all, they are, you know, the phone, what I say, like the local king's magic mushroom or phone is very tight or air pocket is very, very um, tiny. You can see that those phone actually, they have, they, they have a, like a, their air, air po pocket have a, like a gap you can see that pocket so if you don't believe in me get a one set and try you really pay for um the quality so i don't really want to say anything about other people's products but uh, definitely that amazon's uh, makeup sponge is something different you know, and also as a designer, we spend a lot of time to do, um, to come out with something unique. When you purchase those, uh, like a die cut, those uh, pirate copy, it's really hurting us. You know, some people, they are out of business because uh, we just cannot compete. I remember one time I saw one of my stem set no, actually few of my stem set, the people exactly, you know, they don't even change it. They just copy exactly the same pattern. And then they have a 1000 in the start, but it's not rubber stamp, it's clear stamp because the rubber stamp, you cannot really do it. The clear stamp, if they want to copy, is much easier to produce than the rubber stamp. So, they have like 1,000 in the stock and they are so, so cheap. I was going to say, how about I just order from you? But I bought it, I try it, and then their quality is really, really different. So, but uh, some of the company, they just, they won't survive because of those people. So I'm just hoping you guys uh, do understand and the support the artists like me because uh, we really working very hard and uh, try to provide you the best tool we can like me i have been create a lot of videos to share with you guys uh, how to use the local king's product if you don't have a local king's product it's okay you're welcome you know to give it a try try to see what you have and i always mention in my video i'm sure we with you guys the stamping technique the good ideas um, so it's not necessarily, it's not like, I don't force you, you have to buy the stamp. Okay, so that actually look like a Fuji mountain. So that's my background. And then I think that's really pretty. And then for this corner, the original photo, they have some kind of maybe the plants there. So you can add something you like, but, uh, um, I add the rose. I think that works just fine. And where my butterflies here. So now, um, or next video, I'm going to share with you guys how to create this butterfly. But before we do that, we're going to do this uh, a very quick coloring. It's uh, going to use uh, our markers. So I have uh, these uh, garden rose. And then I have uh, my die cut here. 
Okay, I'm going to do a quick coloring. So that's my die cut here, and that's my guiding window here. So this is my rose, and I am going to use the local kings markers. You can use the, any kind of water based markers. And the way did my markers go? Boo boo, did you take my markers? Okay, actually, I found my markers. So you can use any kind of water based markers on the shadow stand. And again, if you haven't used uh, your stamp for a while, I just send it. You just uh, make sure you use uh, this one. Just to give it a little bit standing on the surface and do not use it on your clear stamp. It's going to damage it for sure. So I am going to do a little bit pinking color and let me just bring it. Okay, let me just bring it a little bit forward here. So, and then stay tuned for my next video because I'm going to um, explain to you guys what's different between the shadow stamp and the detail stamp. So the shadow stamp is uh, work well with a marker. Shadow stamp, you color directly on the stamp. The detail stamp, you actually color on the paper. So 2023's new design, we don't have a matching die cut anymore. It's a turn to the digital, but something the digital cannot do, like at least the uh, flowers, it can do because uh, you color directly on the stamp and then the digital, they just uh, they just uh, won't read. Okay, so I just uh, do a little bit um light color, dark color. So I use the two of the pink color, and I'm going to use the the green color. Don't worry about the detail. Okay, if you color a little bit green on the flowers, it's okay. They were green before they turn to the flowers. So I'm going to just. Do Take your time. They dry slow on the rubber, so you don't have to work very fast. So that's a light green. And then I'm going to do a little bit darker green. And then actually I have another video coming. I'm going to do some comparison. So I'm going to um, use one of my shadow stamp. I'm going to do one, just like a, do a one light color, like a one color. I'm going to do another one that when I color, I don't really working on the detail. And then I'm going to do one more card is uh, how to use your marker directly blending on the rubber stamp. So now I'm going to just uh, kind of, I have my foundation color, right? I'm going to just uh, give a little bit dabbing, even a little bit purple, just like that. And then that's giving some black spot too. I know when I do these at the show, just drive people crazy. Okay, you don't have to uh, work fast. Take your time. And I am going to use uh, this uh, paper. This paper, you can see a very, very shiny paper. This is actually the old Quanko color, uh, car stuff. They are at least five years old. The Quanko color is a, look like a super shiny paper, right? And then, unfortunately, they changed the mail. The new Quanko doesn't work anymore, but you can find a nice Macco cardstock or dull glossy cardstock from Marco's paper. Um, you can just use the search window, type Lisa Yang. It will pop out the paper that I use uh, at the, um, during the show. So they have the Mac cardstock and they also have a dual glossy. The dual glossy is not like a super glossy, like uh, old Quanko anymore. But I did a paper review. If you're looking for some glossy car stock and uh, watch our review because I did 10 different kinds of paper review and then hoping you can find the one that worked for you. Okay, so that's my flowers. I think that looks uh, so pretty. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to using my guiding window and then see I created my guiding window. And the old die cut is almost right next to that stamp image. It doesn't have that all, uh, white outline. And then um, it does make a difference. Sometimes those white outline, it can be very annoying. Okay, so this is a quite a detail. And I also have another set, it's called the Hummingbird. They also have some nice flower, can do a beautiful touch up too, if you want to add a little bushes or anything like that. Again, 
When you use detail die cut, you put on your die cut machine, try to put on the right side or left side, don't put on the middle, in the middle, so that way will help the die cut to cut through much easier. Okay, so here is my rows, and what I like to do is uh, see uh, my die cut is already very, very close to or steam image, right? It still have that very tiny white outline, just a little bit tiny one. So can you imagine if you have a, like a, a one eight inches uh, that white outline that looks kind of weird, right? So I kind of just use uh, the magic mushroom, the green one. I kind of just darken a little bit that white, uh, a little white gap. So that way make uh, it looks nicer. So now what I'm going to do is in the beginning I was like I put my rose. Oh, you are actually I think that's a uh, looks great so i was uh, in the beginning i put it like directly on top and that's too much it actually take over my butterfly so and then i just put like this and i kind of trimming and i don't have enough rows so now how about we just put like an angle like this i think that i give more rows and it also doesn't take away my beautiful butterfly Okay, so this is uh, my foundation card. Oh, this one actually I have to move the put it here. So this is my foundation card, and then this is my butterfly. I'm going to just uh, put on top. Or if you don't want to, you can do something else. But uh, if you see this card in person, it's much prettier than from the camera because it, you can't really see that stain. I mean the stained glass effect so that's like that okay so that's the video for today that I am showing you how to do the background first because I don't want this video to become too long if you like to learn how to create this beautiful stained glass finish image um, just make sure you keep watching the next video and in that video I'm going to explain to you how did I kill my mink laminator machine and then also I'm going to give, um, give you a quick um, instruction how you can use your laminator um, to create a um, heatable acetate it's a pretty simple and easy if you have a laminator you can do that too so hoping you like today's video if you like this, uh, this video make sure you give us a thumb up and uh, um, leave me a comment let me know the best way to support local king rubber stand is by click this share button share this awesome channel with your friends that's all i ask for thank you so much for watching see you next time bye guys